Hiya. I'm just going to run you through really quickly how CyberChef works. So CyberChef is a really important tool in your code breaking arsenal. So I thought I'd give you a 10 minute video on how it works, plus some of the um, encoding or encryption techniques you'll probably come across. OK, so I am just going to share my screen and hopefully this will make sense. Uh, when you see what I'm doing. So if uh, you just need to Google CyberChef. So if I show you what it looks like, CyberChef, like so, you'll see it appear here. You just want to click on this one, this link, and it opens up like so. Now I've got it in zoom mode. If I zoom out, you can see that it makes it quite difficult for you to read. So I'm going to zoom in by control and scroll so you can see what I'm doing. The way it works is you type in the code you're trying to decrypt in the input box up here. So I've just typed in hello world and you'll get the output appearing in the right uh, in the bottom right hand uh, box. Now, what you can do is you can use these uh, various operations that appear in the left here. Now, there are lots, hundreds here most of which I don't know what they do, um, and they keep adding new ones, so it's quite difficult to keep up with it. However, um, if you're in doubt, you can type in the search and it should give you some ideas. For example, if you're looking to remove spaces, for example, if I type in remove up here, uh, you can see there's remove white space. So what you do is you drag it over here and notice that the output now has hello world as one word with no space in it. And then you can um, you could work with it. You can add more recipes together here. I'm just going to delete that for now. Uh, one of the things that you will definitely be seeing are lots of ones and zeros. Ones and zeros um, is what we call binary. And you might see an, uh, a code that's written in zeros and ones and you'll have to decrypt it. Well, um, if you just type in the word binary up in the search here, you've got to binary and from binary here that you can use. So to binary allows you to turn uh, words into uh, binary. So if I just drag to binary over there, you can see that lo and behold, it's turned the words hello world into a random series of ones and zeros. And if I uh, select each letter in turn, you can see that the uh, yellow highlight goes over which letter has turned into which piece of binary. OK, that could be useful. You could also, if so, just to show you, you can stack up these operations one after the other. So you could remove white space. And there we go. That looks even more complicated, doesn't it? You can't actually work out what this would be. So imagine if you had a uh, you saw a code that looked like this. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to just delete everything out here. So say you found a bit of code and you were thinking, what on earth does that mean? Well, put it into CyberChef, put it in the input. If you go up to here and type in binary because you think it's a binary and you want to choose from binary and lo and behold, it's decrypted it for you and it shows you hello world there. So magic. You don't have to do lots of, of splitting it up and ca calculating what each letter is. You can use CyberChef for you. So it's a really brilliant tool. Um, other things that you can use for encoding, just want to quickly zip through the sort of things that you can do. Ooh, it's right. It complains if you're trying to do it from binary and it isn't actually binary. So um, I'll get rid of that there. <coughs> so other sort of encodings that you might come across, there is hexadecimal. So if I choose that, you might get letters that have been converted into, they look like numbers, but notice there are also some letters in here. This is, if you see any sort of with a, um, A's, B's, C's, D's, E's or F's in it, then your uh, immediate thought should be this is hexadecimal. So basically the same sort of thing as binary. If I select one letter, oh, it doesn't work in this. Each letter is represented by a two digit uh, number or a uh, number with some letters in it. OK, so that's hexadecimal. So again, you might spot that and uh, be asked to decode it. So same sort of thing. If I copy that out of there and paste that in there, you can choose from hex and it'll convert it back. So this isn't really um, encryption, really, because you can decode it pretty easily. If you can recognise what the output is, there will be a decoder there. 
Another type of encoding, not hexadecimal, is one called base 64. So if I say hello world again, and we have a look at what base 64 looks like. Uh, and if I just turn that to base 64, you can see it looks similar to hex because it's got numbers and letters, but notice these letters go all the way up to, you know, it's got capitals, it's got letters above um, A to F. So if you see that, uh, your first thought should be, oh, this is hex, um, not hex, this is base 64. Also, you'll see that it, it kind of pads the ends with um, equals. So if you can see an equals or a couple of equals on the end, then you can you tend to uh, know that it's a base 64. So it's the same sort of thing. You copy your base 64, put it into the input, and then you will want a from base 64 there. And lo and behold, it's turned it into hello world. OK, uh, there are some other ones. I mean, we never use base 32 or base 58, but they, who, know, who knows that these things might not be used another time. Uh, just quickly looking at favourites, if there's anything else that you might want to see. Um, I don't think so. Let's talk about some hashes. OK, now a hash is different to encoding because what we've seen at the moment is if we take a piece of text like hello world, we can convert it into binary and then we can convert it back out again. So it's not really secret. But if we're trying to uh, make something secret, we have these things called hash functions. OK, MD5 is a, a common hash function. Um, basically, if I type in the word uh, password here, OK, and use MD5 on it, you get a long string and you might go, oh, miss, that looks just like base 64. It's not. It has similarities, but it's not base 64. The important thing about hash functions is you can't decode them. There's not a special from base from MD5 and to MD5. It's literally a one way function and that's supposed to make it secure. So if I had that and I tried to decode it you can see it's trying to encode it again isn't it so if I get rid of that here um, you're a bit stuffed because you think oh this looks like a hash function if I do that you can see there's all sorts of uh, different hash things but there's nothing um, from it we could even try analyze hash here we go this is quite nice because it kind of says oh I've got this I don't know what it says so it can't work out that it was the word password but um, it kind of gives you well there's lots and I don't know what half of these are <laughs> um, it, it kind of makes a best guess that it could be one of those hashing functions I'm reliably informed by other students who've done this on cyber first girls there are certain websites that you can try reverse hashing from um, I'm not going to do that for this demo but that you might be able to plug this into another website and it has a list of common hashes so it might be able to find it um, there are more complicated hashes as well. So one is called, I've forgotten what all the hash functions are called. There's one called RSA. Am I, I might be lying. RSA decrypt. No, I can't remember. There are other hash functions that, it's called BS. No, I can't remember. There are other hash functions. MD5 is just the one that came to mind. So that's worth um, knowing about. Historically, this is quite an insecure one because um, it only uses a bit a hash length of 32, which you could uh, brute force and try and guess. So it's not good to use MD5 in the wild, but you might have that one in um, uh, a question. Other cool things that you can do is you can analyze pictures. So I am going to pause the recording now. Ooh, I've so some of the more advanced questions give you images and ask you questions about it. Um, images, you may know, are built up of lots and lots of pixels. These pixels are represented by numbers, but more commonly for us humans, uh, they're represented as hexadecimal. And we already know about that. If uh, you're given an image and uh, it says, you know, some cryptic question about it, um, you can you can add it into CyberChef. Uh, you can choose this open file as input and locate locate the picture. Um, I've just downloaded it, uh, the one I want to show you, which is here. So let's try X if edited that one there. So if I drag it in here, um, you don't need to worry about what the picture is. When it, um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because it's a bit big. It comes up as a load of random, random gobbledygook. 
What you can do is you can look at um, this thing called EXIF data. So if I type in EXIF here, uh, you can choose extract EXIF. Now, you'll be familiar with it. If I choose extract EXIF, it has found 10 tags. Each um, time you take a photograph, the camera or your phone adds extra what's called metadata to your picture. And uh, they could be things like the make of the com uh, camera, the resolution. The, this is all gobbledygook, but you can kind of see the date it was taken. You can see uh, anything about the, in the lens info in it. This one's not particularly interesting. If I delete that and add the second one, um, I can't remember if it is this one here. This is the pictures of the girls last year, you can see that sometimes there are little comments that are left in there. So these well, might well be um, these might well be uh, useful in a in a challenge situation to know that you can see these EXIF outputs there. Um, the other thing before I move on to the last one, which is kind of fun, if I delete that, you can also um, look at the hex dump of a picture. So basically, this will take a picture and convert it. Did you see it took a little bit longer to do because it's converting the whole picture, which is my lovely girls um, doing their semi-final last year, and it converts. And do you remember I said that all of them are all of the pixels represented as um, as hexadecimal? So you can kind of see the pixels. There's lots of them are all being generated here. Most of this is probably not particularly helpful, but we have had clues down at the bottom. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you should. There you go. It's not very interesting, but sometimes there have been clues hidden down at the bottom of the picture. This is sometimes ways that people, the um, hackers can inject uh, malicious code into an innocuous looking picture, but they can actually add extra code in there. So sometimes um, two hex dump can, can pay dividends. Um, right, the other one I wanted to show you is my last picture, just because it was quite fun. Um, if I drag that one from my downloads, I think that was three. Here it is. So if I do the two hex dump here, no, not that one. I wanted to do the exif one, sorry, exif, and do extract exif. Okay, this time I've got to use a comment. What do you think that is? OK, hopefully some of you will have spotted that that dot dot dash dash dot dot dash dash with those forward slashes looks a bit like Morse code. So what you can then do is if I, you can add another tab to this. So if you've got lots of codes on the go, I can paste that one in there. Clearly, it's saying this is not a, a JPEG. So this is obviously not going to work on here. But if you recognize that's Morse code, hopefully if I do from Morse code in there, that doesn't make sense. I think that was supposed to be Mrs. James was here, but <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, maybe the letters uh, word limiter is a oh forward slash. Here we go. There, there we go. Uh, so the forward slash is uh, a word delimiter, and it says Mrs. James was here. I'm not saying you're going to get um, such silly things on there, but it's worth knowing. That's the sort of um, challenges you might get. There are lots of other things in here. I mean, have a hunt around, be familiar with these things, be happy about what binary is, what hexadecimal is, what this char code thing is. Um, there are lots of things in there and hopefully we can um, work on that one later. OK, I'm going to leave it there.